It's a gorgeous Saturday afternoon here in Uisong, Korea, and it's time for the men's gold medal game at the Pacific Asia Curling Championships. I'm Hans Fraunlob, and I'm joined by world mixed curling champion Sander Rolvag of Norway. Good afternoon to you, Sander. Good afternoon, Hans. Well, after a great week of curling, we're down to our final match of the tournament, the men's gold medal final between Japan and China. Should be a cracker. Let's meet the teams. Here's the lineup for Team Japan. At lead is Koski Morizumi. Tsuyoshi Yamaguchi is at second stone. Tetsuro Shimizu is at third. Yusuke Morizumi is the skip. The alternate is Kosuke Hirata, and their coach is Hatomi Nagaoka. Team lineup for China. At lead, we have uh, Sanja Liang. At second is So Chang. At third and vice skip, we have Zhu Xiaoming. And the skip is Lu Rei. Alternate is Yang Teu. And uh, the coach is Marcel Rock. So let's have a look at how the teams arrived here at the final. Korea, China, Chinese, Taipei, and Japan were the playoff qualifiers. New Zealand just missing out on the playoffs. Rounding out the standings in the nine team event were Australia, Hong Kong, Kazakhstan, and first timers from Qatar. So that took us into the Olympic style playoff format. Korea and Japan faced off. Japan has advanced to the gold medal match. China defeated Chinese Taipei. So Korea and Chinese Taipei will be playing for the bronze medal. But our gold medal match today, Japan versus China. And now we move inside to the Uisong Curling Center. It's been a Fantastic week here in Nui Sung. We're grateful to the Korean Curling Federation and the local organizing committee. They've done a great job. Felt very welcome here. We see the stone colors for today's game. Japan's playing the red stones. China's going to be playing the yellow stones. China was the higher ranked of the two teams, so they get hammer in the first end. But we've seen some fantastic games involving these teams this week, Sander, and I'm expecting this one to be no different. Well, if you asked me about the winner two days ago, I would have said China for sure. But last night, we saw Japan back to their old self. And I'd expect them to uh, continue that trend and bring their good play into the final. So getting us underway in the gold medal final, Japanese lead, Kosuke Morizumi. Mine's good. Yes, Sander, you're right. We've been mentioning all week that this Morizumi team who finished fourth in the world at the World Men's last year Hadn't quite found their A game, but they sure found it last night when it mattered in the semi. Ah, such a good game, too. Full of drama and great shots being made. Uh, that was a hard attack waiting to happen for both of us. Oh, absolutely. It was uh, one of the more exciting games you'll ever see. Full of drama. Chinese lead, Sang Jilang. Deciding to go around that center guard right away. Long guard, though, so it pops out the other side. Well, we had uh, pretty much the same start in the women's final. And then we saw the hit being played at a bit of a, a cautious end, and it ended up being a blank. But uh, what do you know? Japan, right? Firing from the very start. You're going to play the freeze, even though that guard is just barely over the hog line. Yeah, why keep it open when you can freeze to everything? That's great. It's fun for us, folks. It means we're going to get some big entertainment rocks in play. Going to tuck one around. Trying to bury it now into the back of the forefoot. So game on right from the get-go here. And there we see it squarely behind that Chinese stone in the eight. Zhang Jilang. He skipped the Chinese team to victory at the 2014 Pacific Asia Championships. 
Now playing the lead position for Team China. Well, anything you can do, I can do better. Look at that. Corner frozen, absolutely perfect. Sang looking on at his handiwork. China lies one. Tsuyoshi Yamaguchi. Japanese second stone. And this team is burning to make it to the Winter Olympics. And saw Tsuyoshi at the end of the semi final victory over Korea. Overcome with emotion, knowing that they've qualified not only for this gold medal match, but in doing so have also qualified for the World Men's Curling Championships, which will be held in April next year in Edmonton. And combined with their fourth place finish last year, Sander, at the uh, Men's Worlds means that this Morozumi foursome is very close to achieving their Olympic dream. China's Zhao Cheng. Yeah, I'd say uh, they probably already have a good chance of getting to the, to the Olympics with a fourth play finish last year, but if they ever just win just four games maybe at the World Championship uh, next year, that should be pretty much a guarantee to get to the Olympics in Pyeongchang. And Japan hasn't sent a men's team to the Olympics since uh, Nagano in 98, where they're obviously pre-qualified as a host nation, so uh, that, that would be a big, big thing for them. Yes, many, many successful Japanese women's teams at Worlds and Olympic level, but it's been a while between drinks for Japanese men's curling, so Team Morozumi looking to change that. By the guard. Looking for a little inside flop if they can get it, and they do. Very nice stone there by Yamaguchi. Here's the rules of play for this gold medal match. Teams will play a minimum of eight ends. Each team has 38 minutes of thinking time and one 60 second timeout where they can consult with their coach. Game is scheduled for 10 ends. Lou Ray sensing the danger, Sander, and looking to rip that guard. Yeah, when you have the last stone, you gotta make sure you open up the center a little bit. Don't get too uh, caught up in the, the forfeit play. And Zhao does a nice job there ripping the center, but look at all of those stones tight roped along that center line. Great shooting in the first end. Japanese third player, Tetsuro Shimizu. As I like to call him sometimes, the Shinkansen. He can really throw big takeout weight. He's gentle here, though. Throwing a guard. This one might be fractionally over curling. Now we see it does. Expose the rocks on the outturn yeah. side. <laughs> well, this is an interesting call here from Lu Ray. He'll be asking his third player, Zhu Xiaoming, to play a corner freeze on the Japanese stone in the button. So that tells me that China's thinking aggressive. They still think they can get two or three in this end. <laughs> Good attempt there from Zhu. Good angle for the Chinese, but there is a bit of a gap there, and we can see Yusuke Marazumi tapping his foot, so that says to me he'll be asking Shimizu to just play hack weight at this.
Are you surprised that both teams are going at it so hard in the first end, Sandy? Uh, I'm not surprised Japan does. <laughs> but maybe uh, a little surprised China was uh, sucked into it. I, I, I would guess China would be uh, the more conservative of the two teams and maybe look to keep things a little open, knowing how uh, aggressive Japan plays. So now we see that Japanese stone on the button. Red stones belong to Japan. Angles are better now for the run-in on the front stone, though, for Lou Ray. So looks like he's going to have a crack at that. I'd like to hit this one just off nose and maybe spring both stones to the right. Guard. Nice stone there by Zhu Xiaoming. So now it's China that's gathering their stones <laughs> on the periphery. And they've got the hammer here in the first, so. Now Sumi and Shimizu discussing their options. So they've looked at the corner freeze. They've looked at the nose hit here. They're looking at the nose hit or the inside roll. Danger with the corner freeze, of course, on the yellow if you try it and you slide past it. Set up a double on your own. If you watched our women's final, you saw Korea's Kim Eun Jung give her Chinese opponent a pathway out of the end by putting her own stone too close together and set up a triple takeout. Call in the end here has just to peel the, the yellow one and roll out. Japanese skip. Yusuke Morizumi. Yeah, don't want to leave anything on the wing for China to come off of uh, onto their shot stone. So I think just uh, a little hit and run here. Straight peel. Well spotted, Sander. So now those four stones on the center line. Two belong to Japan, two belong to China. And Lou Ray says, I think I can get that. <laughs> Widening the brush now is pretty tight room for a minute there. I thought they were just going to play a big weight pick, which I thought was very brave. <coughs> I think they're still playing the pick, just uh, with a controlled weight. Yeah. So controlled weight, just catch a quarter of the redstone and only be lying one, but uh be useful if they could save their shooter though, wouldn't it? Not sure if they can though, Hans. I'd be very uh you'd be playing with that top yellow for sure. Certainly be playing with fire. Chinese skip. Lu Ray. Quiet wait, whoa, 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 whoa. trying to navigate whoa, the guard. Whoa, whoa, well, now they're coming whoa, off it, so they're either wrecking on the front already. Yes, they are. So they're trying to save their shooters now. So it was the down weight, but it over curls. Clips his own into the back eight foot and the back 12 foot, so Japan's still lying <coughs> one. Yeah, a lot of yellows around though. <laughs> sure are, I'd be nervous.
So Japan does have to be careful here. Don't want to give a pinball double or triple that might give China three or four. Wanting to put this top 12, top eight, and hide a piece behind the guard, trying to stagger both the guard, the next shot, and the shot stone, sort of a, what they call in Canada, Christmas tree. Christmas tree, it, yes. Sort of the branches of a Christmas tree. Um, I think what he's saying is, if Lou Ray played the blast on the, the red stones here, even as it lies now, that red shot still might spring off the second shot and onto the yellow stone to the right of our screen and jam there. So, not feeling like there's too much risk here. We're in the very first end, and it's been an interesting one. It's the gold medal match here at the Pacific Asia Curling Championships in Wisan, Korea. I think this game is going to be a real big game between the skips. As we see Morizumi just nibbling the rings. That's a pretty good spot there. Well, if you look at the records, Hans, Lou Ray has played six Pacific Asia Curling Championship finals and he's won six gold medals. It's a pretty good winning percentage. Yusuke Morizumi has also played six finals, but he's lost every single one. That's not such a good winning percentage. It's kind of the definition of bridesmaid, isn't it? <laughs> Very much so. It's, um, he has six silvers, no golds, no, not even a bronze. That's quite amazing. So, Consolation prize, of course, for the Pacific Bridesmaids as they generally get a trip to the World Men's Curling Championships. Two teams qualify out of this region, but <coughs> yeah, after a while that starts to wear on you. You hate coming second all the time to the same team, so I think you're right, Sander. Team Japan will be looking to climb to the top of the Pacific podium for the first time. They really want this one. Team China wants it no less. Overheard their team talk prior to the game there. Very intense for this one. Big shot for Lou Ray. Clean the run back to pick the shot stone off. Uh, only for one, I think. So last stone on its way in a very entertaining first in for Lou Ray. If you get it wrong, you're in trouble. Well, net result is a steal of one for Japan. So Lou Ray does a nice job of Relocating the stones, but the angles were pretty tough there. Nice guard by Morozumi. So, after a very entertaining first end to play, Japan with the steal. It's Japan one, China no score. Kosuke Morozumi gets us underway in the second end. Want to bring this into the house. Sang Chia Lang. Trying to set a corner guard. Very gentle handle there from Zhang. This one's moving right over there. Very long guard. 
barely up to the World Curling Federation logo. You'll know that Uisong is, in fact, the garlic capital of Korea. And during the break between the women's gold medal game and the men's gold medal game, my colleague Sandra Rolvag did find and point out to me the elusive garlic street lamp of Uisong. And uh, so I went out and took a photo of it. So now I'm convinced that they do exist. I couldn't find it this morning on the way to the rink, but uh, they're out there. You could see it from our window. Well, yeah, it's it's kind of like, you know, the you go to Disneyland and you get the waffles that are in the shape of Mickey Mouse and the bushes that are cut in the shape of the mouse ears. And it's kind of like that. Once you see it once, you kind of see it everywhere. So now that you've pointed out the garlic street lamp to me, I you know, everywhere I look, including out the window, which is, would have been the first place to look, but I obviously missed it. I'm so happy for you, Hans. Yeah, I feel my week is complete now. Just gonna nudge that guard. So, attempted corner freeze, comes a bit short and early in the piece here, but uh, we can see the Chinese are attacking. Zhang was light with his, well not light, but corner guard was long. And a fraction light there on the attempted corner freeze. So Morizumi's gonna be asking Yamaguchi just to hit this one on the nose. I'll tell you what would make my week, Hans, if you get nine more ends like the first one. Two right. First end was great. It's kind of like a carry-on from last evening for the Japanese. They had 10-plus ends like that last night. Nice stone there by Yamaguchi. Semi-final went to an extra end. So Japan's lying one, two of their stones in front, and Liu Rei is going to be asking Xiao Chang to run it back. Stuffs it, runs it back, but jams it, so the Japanese stone <laughs> remains on the center line. Chinese stone hangs around the left-hand side of our picture, so maybe something for them to use a bit later on. I mentioned that both of these nations have qualified now also for the World Men's Curling Championships. That's how they earn points towards the Olympics. We've talked about the Japanese team situation, but Sandra uh, China is going to need a very strong performance at uh, World Men's to put them in the frame for the Olympics, aren't they? That's all about getting those points and this is the last chance to get them. Trying to bump and split them. Pushes the shot rock back to the T line, gets a little outside flop with his shooter. Japan lies too, but there's some front stones for China now to use for protection. They've got the hammer. And China currently has no points, but uh, they are qualified for the qualifying event, Olympic qualifying event that will take place in December next year, where all teams that have uh, placed third at the Pacifics and have participated at the World Championships will be uh, able to play off for the last two spots, I believe. That's right. Uh, World Curling Championships feature 12 nations, but the Olympic curling event for men's and women's is a 10-nation event. Mixed doubles will be eight nations. So the host nation gets a place, and seven more nations earn their place through World Championships performance and point accumulation. And yes, the final two places go to the top two teams out of the Olympic qualifying event. So something going here for China now. Maneuvering their stone behind that corner guard, so. Delicate shot coming up here now for Tetsuro Shimizu. This one's really cutting. Yeah. 
It's on the guard. Just. Okay. Reminiscent of his guard rubbing the 10th end at the semifinal. Just grazes it. So China lies one. They got something going now with the hammer in two. Lots of woes. A little outside roll. So small break for Japan. Zhou <laughs> Xiaoming <laughs> saying, I didn't think it was going to do that. Yusuke <laughs> informing his teammates that, yeah, I know this looks scary, but we are second shot. So Shinizu is going to try and take the long way home here. Way out wide, around the guard, long corner guard. This one's tracking, really not moving miles past the guard. Here it comes. Oh, look at that finish. <laughs> yeah, I think Tetsuro was thinking, I wonder if that's ever going to curl. Sure did at the end. Japan lies one. Yeah, very nice finish from the from the wings and then not, it's not all I see you play on where that, that shot is possible. Yeah, terrific ice conditions here this week from head ice technician Mark Callan and his excellent local ice technician crew. Players have all been highly complimentary, lots of curl, very fast, and so that gives us the full range of shots. So what can Zhu Xiaoming do? Whoa, hard, whoa, hard. Oh, he just clips that one in the top eight going by. That one had a vapor trail behind it. See the contact here and watch it just clip that stone in the top eight and just nudge it over actually in front of the Japanese stone. So. Offering a bit more protection. So is uh, Japan now thinking force, do you think, Sander? Are they going to be playing the back stone? What's, what do you think we call, we, our call is here? It certainly looks like it. When Shimizu has the brush right next to the stone like he does, that's uh, usually an indication that they're playing the hit. We'll have to get a force to turn the hammer, right? Uh, back to square one, now eight ends and you have the last stone, so um, that would be a great start for Japan. Want to stick around, they roll away. A great look from her overhead. Lou Ray telling us exactly where that want stone wants to go. And Zhu Xiaoming confirming that. So it's the hit in the inside roll. No real chance at a double it would jam. So they're just looking to roll for second shot behind cover and set up their two that way. Quite a long roll, though. We have to roll about five feet. Well, we talked about uh, Wang Bingyu taking a break from the game. Lu Ray also have uh, done that after the disappointing fourth place at the Olympics. Took some time off, but he's back and he's been playing really well this week. 
There's that inside roll. Watch it spin now. It may spin back behind the guard and sure does. Half hidden, so a nice stone there. Second shot, but probably going to force Morizumi to play an in-turn freeze because I don't know he's going to be able to see enough on the outturn to make a play at it. Nice touch there by Lou Ray. He's built like a linebacker, but he's got fantastic touch. There we see the stone that he just threw is, in fact, half buried behind that corner guard. So Japan's line one. China line two and three. So the play for Morizumi here is the freeze. Yep, definitely. I don't even have to fully freeze it, just get maybe... Uh, just a quarter cover behind that guard. Top eight, top four. Should be pretty good and sh shouldn't leave a double. Just uh, the line is the most important here, I think. We know it tends to curl a bit less towards the wing, so uh, it might not be too easy to get it fully buried. Just gonna make sure not to leave a double of some kind here for a uh, multiple score. Well clear of the guard. Lots of weight, too. Going to slide deep past the stone in the 8-foot. And disappointingly for Japan, all the way back into the back of the 8-foot. So fourth shot. Uh, I've seen, seen that a few times. Uh, it's mm. uh, just a little quicker down the center line. Uh, just first because there's been a lot of stones down that path, but also with the, with the less curl there, it tends to be a little quicker. It's a possible shot for two here, I think, for China. Yeah, definitely, just uh, come down onto the red with soft weight. You only have to push it about three or four centimeters to get two. That's a soft hack here. Yeah. Catch about half of it. Just roll to the back of the four, and uh, that should move that redstone far enough to score two. It's definitely going to jam, but even if it does, it should be enough for China to score their two points. So big <coughs> error there by Morozumi. Leaves the door wide open for Lou Ray. No problem with the guard, or there shouldn't be. So it's a pretty clear path to the shot rock. Oh, can't afford to overthrow this one. Yeah. It's not going to curl too oh. much coming oh. down this way. Oh. Sweeper's hard on it immediately. Oh. Want to keep the angle. They can be on the inside and make the shot. Now they call them off. Don't want to hit it too thin. Spin it back. Have they done just that? Yes, they have. Panic, sweep, over sweep, and I think it's just a score of one. Players looking at it, they kick the rocks off. China sweeping that one hard all the way down. They thought they were going to be fine, but once again, the inside out curl fools them, and Lou Ray can't believe it. Chance for a two, but it's a score of one after two ends of play. We're all tied up at one. Zhang Xilang gets us underway in the third, so 
Japan with a steal of one in the first, and China with the chance to break on top oh. with a deuce in the second. But a bit of panic job over sweeping that stone track straight. We've seen that consistently over the last few draws, but inside out seems to be a little bit straighter, and it fooled them. Caught the rock thin, and they only scored one. I'll tell you one thing, though. With Lou Ray, what I like is he, he always gives his rock to the sweepers. Never overthrows it. Always very careful of, you know, he's either a little soft. He's just rather a little soft in uh, overthrowing a rock. And the, user, uh, the sweepers will always be in the picture. And, and that makes a lot more shots. Yeah, it certainly does, especially when you've got sweepers as strong as Zhou and Zhang. They can really move the brush, as can the Japanese front end of Morozumi and Yamaguchi. So if you've got strong sweepers, you might as well use them. I might have a, an interesting fact for you, Hans. Bring it on. I did say that Morozumi has played uh, six Pacific finals, lost all of them. There's one thing he hasn't done in six Pacific finals, but he has done today. I'm guessing it's not citing a garlic street lamp. <laughs> it's uh, stealing. Oh, really? He's never stolen a point in a Pacific final. Over six, six finals, not a single steal. And he starts the game today with a steal. Well, is that the change of gears that it's going to take to get Team Japan to the top of the podium? Very well researched, Sander. That's a fantastic one. I like that. He did score three in the first end once. <laughs> no, that helps. No, it didn't, didn't quite cut didn't it. Get across the top. <laughs> Maybe it's better to steal instead. Well, it's, uh, they have given up a lot of steals, however, in the games. So well, I think that's something that you got to look out for. Yeah, well, you did mention how aggressively they play. And when you're playing with fire all the time, every once in a while, you're going to get scorched. And <laughs> that happens to them a lot. They always have a lot of rocks in play. And you'd think when they play that aggressive, they'll they pick up a, f a couple of steals too, but um, not in the finals anyway. Mm -hmm. Xiao Chang, so. Very yeah. interesting. I can also mention that uh, out of those six finals, oh. lost to Ch China oh. five times. Oh. Yeah, of course, uh, Korea was the oh. uh, oh. winner last year. Oh. Well, 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 well. Well, well. Japan Heart. saw off the Korean challenge last night in the semifinal. That one slides back button, so. Interesting, now the Chinese stones behind the T-line. Great chance here for the Japanese. And they got a real let off in the second, effectively getting a force, but the Chinese really should have scored two. Japan will take it though. They've got the hammer now in the third, and so Yoshi Yamaguchi looking to protect those stones. Yeah, I like the call, but uh, what you might be thinking as well, if they're giving up a lot of steals, maybe they're just getting a little too much sucked into the forfeit play when they have hammer, and uh, not as good as just making sure they have a shot to score. So. Um, It'll be interesting to see how much uh, they play along the center line with the, the last one advantage and <laughs> if they'll well, ever put they up are. a corner and try and <laughs> try and <laughs> spread the play a little bit. Dropping a center there, Yamaguchi is uh, not really <laughs> what you <laughs> what you're looking for. That's not really hammer. spreading the house, is it? There's a great look from the hack end, and every stone is within two stone widths of the center line. That's that's just a missed shot, but of course, uh, when you do play along the center line, it's yeah, there's a lot less room for error. Zhou Chang looking to add to the pile. Whoa. Well, ordinarily, when the play's in the center, it leads to the benefit of the team without last rock. But sometimes, when you got the hammer. Sometimes you say, okay, center guard, let's get in there first and build Whoa. something up that way. You know, the basic thought is uh, har, 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 you have har, har, hammer. Har, har, har. If you get all the play in around that red forfeit circle, that's just a lot less room to score more than a single point. Har, har, har. Uh, of course, if you spread it out to the wings, a lot more room to play around with. And 
you keep the center open, you'll always have a chance of putting a stone in on the button for the single score. But uh, <laughs> she's getting pretty crowded in the forefoot now. <laughs> Bit of a party there. I'd say it's looking good and good for Japan right now. Uh, but uh, those things change so quickly. One good draw, one good freeze in there, and uh, Japan could be in trouble. So, so a big shot here for Yamaguchi. Right bumper weight just wants to get slightly across nose. Looking for a little inside roll. It's so important to, to get to the inside here. Trying to hold the line. Get the inside flop. And it's looking pretty good for Team Japan. They're line two. Chinese stone biting the back of the button. Sanders says this is massively constrained the scoring area though for Japan. How do you get another one in there? But line two right now. Up to thirds rock, so each team has four stones to come yet here. I think. I think Lou's seen quite enough, and he's thinking, let's just pound something here. <laughs> so Zhu Xiaoming. Throw some smoke here. Oh! Well, hard! 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 Trying the double run back. Just blows it by everything. Well, he used the guards in play too. Hoping for a bit of action there on that red one sailing into the forefoot, but just shoots it by. So Japan dodges one bullet. I'll tell you one thing. If you're if you're ever in doubt, if your team, if the team without the hammer starts peeling the center guards. You know you're in good shape. Life is good. <laughs> yeah. Here's Tetsuro Shimizu. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now playing the head. I like this. Um, chance to maybe uh, open up the scoring area just a little bit here. And just make sure to keep the shooter around. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh -oh. Shimizu. That is not. <laughs> it's not the kind of triple takeout you want to make. Kills two of his own and rolls out himself. That's pretty darn ugly. Uh, huge mistake. That was not the tolerance for that shot. And of course, center guard in play. Like mentioned, that's all it takes. One miss and a uh, good shot by China here and uh, Japan might be in trouble. So will that be a moment in the game we look back later in the match and say, if only. Great brushing by China, bringing it up just to bite the front button. Yeah. Japan's <laughs> still shot, but look, they are surrounded completely by Chinese stones. Nice draw weight there by Zhu Xiaoming. So. Shimizu, after that disastrous last rock, is now being asked to play a corner freeze across the nose of that stone in the button. So, <laughs> super delicate shot to play. Can't afford to tap it. Can't afford to sit outside on it. Zero room for error here. By the guard, so that's one danger avoided. Curls across the face, so he got the angle he was looking for, but has he left enough available for the Chinese to bump? 
I think they can tap their own sander. Shimizu is trying to block the path so that the Chinese couldn't raise their stone in the front of the button, but he said it had to get across the face, but it's just overcurled slightly and let's draw weight. Pretty sure here that Liu Rei can just gently tap his own on top of the Chinese shot, or Japanese shot, rather. Yeah, gotta be a little careful where you <coughs> end up uh, with your playing rock here. Yeah, you could set up a double, you're right. However, I get it too thin and just roll to the T-line. Something for uh, Morzumi to come off of. Liu Rei talked about his excellent touch. He uses his, his sweepers, so let's see if he does that here. Sweepers on it early. Well, they overswept one, so now I think they're a bit gun shy, but this one is over curling. It's just going to get a piece of the Japanese red. Oh, look at these angles now. Have they given them a chance to, to double them out? Could he hit just a little bit high side on that stone just delivered and <sighs> pop the yellow stone sideways? <laughs> Yasuki's certainly looking at it. Japan's still lying one. Pretty tempting here to have a go at that double. And yeah, <laughs> I'm not surprised that Yasuki Morizumi is looking at this. I guess his rationale is that even if he loses the stone on the button, he might still be lying two. Good chance here if he hits it just off nose with weight, and we know he can throw big weight, that that yellow stone on the center line just pops straight sideways between the two red stones. Well, the first end was entertaining, the second end shaping up even more so. Shimizu tripling out his own stone, and now Morizumi with a chance to make a surgical strike. the Chinese stone across the front of the button. Not quite far enough to leave himself lying uh, more than one, but at least he takes the danger away of China raising that stone onto his. There we see it just had to hit it a little bit more on the high side, but repositions the stone. Felt like a bit of a deja vu from last night. Deja vu all over again. That's absolutely right. <laughs> It wasn't a double last night, but uh, Marzumi trying to uh, just pick out uh, Korea's shot stone clean, with peel weight, and just <laughs> moved it over three centimeters. <laughs> yep, the hardest thrown tick shot you've ever seen. Still a chance here for China to squeeze one between those two reds and into the button area. could afford to very lightly feather the outside red on the left-hand side as we're looking at it. If it overcurls and it feathers the red on the right-hand side, though, they won't get to the button. That's a pretty brave call. Sure is. I think you'd see a lot of teams just play that double on the top two uh, reds, but the problem with playing that is there's a big chance you leave a nose hit, uh, double for two for Japan, so staying aggressive here. Stone's starting to move now. Here it comes. Have they left it too long? Oh, they're through the hole. Oh, look at that. Great shot by Lou Ray. Maybe. Oh, gosh. You would have wished it would have just not taken that little outside rub there. But that's really quibbling. Navigating through that tiny port. And just glancing off the Japanese stone, but 
China now lies one. And a decision time here for uh, Japan. Oh, there's a great look at it from the hack end. Abenai, that's a Japanese word I've learned. Dangerous. Yeah, I think they're looking to just uh, redirect off the redstone left corner. You know, if you ever flash it and you just catch half of the shot stone, they'll be uh, giving up steel too, probably. China has the yellow stones. They've got shot rock. Japan with the red ones. Ooh, I'm not even sure what the call is here, huh? I don't know. Judging by the brush position, Sander, I think he's just trying to run the port and uh, somehow hammer that one on the nose, but boy, oh boy. Uh, I'd say a little bit more. If it's a redirect, then it would be a bit of a pinball shot off those front reds. But let's see, here it comes. Oh, playing our turn, anyway. Well, what have we got at the end of it all? Taking a look, I think it's one China. Oh boy. <laughs> well, what a start to this curling match, folks. After all of that, all of those stones in the forefoot. Very brave attempt there by Morozumi to try and hit that one on the nose, but the net result, it's a steal of one to China. After three ends of play, this one's pulsating. China leads it. Two to one. Sang Chilang gets us underway now in the fourth. We're watching live coverage of the gold medal match here in the men's event at the Pacific Asia Curling Championships 2016 from Uisong, Korea. Speaking with some officials between games. At the uh, decision for who will be awarded the venue for next year's event hasn't been determined, so can't tell you right now where the 2017 event is going to be held. If you're keen to host a curling event, let me know. I'll put a good word in for you, but I'm sure it's uh, going to be um, a good event. This event is growing year on year. We had uh, Cotter competing in the men's and women's event for the first time this year, Sander. So 10 countries now in the Pacific Asia zone. And nine of those 10 countries competed here this year. There's talk of potential new countries joining this region. I've heard about curling in Singapore. Speaking with WCF Vice President uh, Hugh Milliken, who said that uh, Saudi Arabia has expressed interest. So from back in the day when I used to compete in the uh, late 90s when there were only four nations competing. This event is, is growing in leaps and bounds. Bit of a different approach this time to the end. You have the corner guard, two stones in the house and uh, Japan with the chance to just uh, keep things a little more open. You could see how they're giving away steals yeah. uh, <laughs> from the way they're playing in that previous end. Uh, they had chances there, so uh, it was absolutely fine to, to make the calls they were making. I think just uh, one really bad shot from Shimizu kind of uh, ruined everything. 
Yeah, it massively turned the end around. Japan was looking good for at least a pair, and uh, neck minute, all change. Nose hit there. But you can see the difference when the player players take the play to the sides of the sheet. Look how much more room there is in the scoring zone for Japan. Think about how clustered those stones were in the forefoot last end, and now looks like the wild frontier there in the eight foot. Yamaguchi trying to use that corner guard. Well, it's not the first steal that China has, uh, has done this week. They actually have a steal effic efficiency of 35%. So just about every third end they play without hammer, they steal. And for newer curling fans, that's pretty high, isn't it? Relative <laughs> to most teams. It's pretty good. It's the second highest in the competition. Actually, Chinese Taipei. Really? The highest at 41%. So Interesting. That usually indicates that the team is very comfortable having a lot of rocks in play. Yeah, and good at playing towards the forfeit, oh. I think. Yeah, good yeah. reasons. Good draw weight. Yep. Oh, 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 oh. Another thing to note is oh. Japan has uh, easily the highest hammer efficiency in the tournament. 51%. No, no, no. Meaning they... Uh, they score two or more when they have the last an advantage more than half the time. And again, 51% there is a quite a high number, I suspect, relative to the rest of the field, Sander. Well, China's at 40, so uh, it's a bit of a gap there. The basic strategy of curling, when you've got last rock, you want to score two. When you don't have last rock, you want to prevent your opponent from scoring two, force them to take one, or if you can get aggressive, steal the end from your opponent. So if you've got the combination of uh, high hammer efficiency, which means you score a lot with the hammer, and high steal efficiency, which means you're stealing points without the hammer, that usually means you're winning curling games. Absolute, absolutely. Xu Xiaoming. Oh. Trying to rip the guard. Executes it well. Pan lying two, but no protection now. We're on to thirds rocks now, so interesting choice here. Sticking with the guard as opposed to uh, splitting the house. But uh, they're playing for the force now, really. So they still think they can... I'm oh, sorry, apologies, they've got the hammer, so they're still trying to get there too. This one's coming pretty deep, though. Looking for a little separation now, but it comes up well, deeper than they'd like, so Shimizu's game's struggles continue. He had a disastrous shot in the previous end, and then this attempted guard slides right into the ring, so easy pickings for Zhu Xiaoming to double these off. <laughs> imploring the rock to curl, jams it. So Japan still lies too. Just had to hit it on the nose, but it was a little bit full on that inside out path where stones really don't move that much and jams it. Chance for Japan to lie three, and you can see how <laughs> more neat this is for Japan. Everything's in the open. Yeah. If anything goes wrong here, they'll have the chance to score their single. 
and uh, that's a I'd say it's the preferred way to go about it, but... Uh, Certainly manages your heart rate better. <laughs> yeah. Japan does lie three. It's, uh, it's tougher to score big ends when it's that open, though, and you don't have any guards, because uh, playing a strong team like China, they'll always make a double or two, and then you'll have to go again, so... Playing around the center guard, obviously you can get a huge end. That's when you see the f fours and fives up on the board. Yep. But uh, in a close fought game like this, you just want to maybe keep a little more control when you have the last stone. So let's see how the rest of this end plays out. We're down to Skip's Rocks now. Japan with the hammer. That'll be China's Lu Ray. See by the brush position there, that's about where he wants to hit the rock. He's trying a double takeout. Get the inside roll, no yeah. double there, but they do close it up a bit. Still looking optimistic if you're a fan of Japan here for a deuce at least. And if they can get stones into good positions, maybe a chance at a three. Do you sacrifice the stone at the back, Sander, for a jam in the name of rolling a little bit to the left on this shot? Uh, yeah, I think so. I don't think the jam does very much. So the roll is definitely task one. Absolutely have to keep your shooter in the rings, though, so you don't want to get too wild going for the roll. Yeah, leaving some yellow stones in the 12 foot and have last stones, no uh, big concern. I want to be precise with this one. Shimizu. That is a pretty good roll right there. There you go. So they do jam the back one, but yes, they do get the roll in return. <laughs> Yusuke was calling them off, but uh, Tetsuro Shimizu was having none of it. He had the sweepers on it all the way. He knew they couldn't lose the roll. He liked the look of it, and great result. Good down control weight there from Japan. So for China, those stones are spread all around the eight foot, and how do you get rid of two of them? Yeah, yeah, just have to play what we call a slash double, or an angle double. Put the outside of the rock next to uh, Zhao Meng's broom. Pretty much exactly where the broom is, and uh, try and get two if it doesn't make it. Japan with a draw for three. It's a pretty, pretty huge shot right now. Oh, very nice stone there by Lou Ray. That's a cracking shot right there. Well read by Zhu Xiaoming, but a good team shot there and right when they needed it. Watch the stones fly, perfect angle. Kills two Japanese shots, so takes the danger of three out of play. Well, the curve a little more, he might jam on the back hill. Yeah. <laughs> so now it's deep breath time for Japan. Seems like a simple task to hit the 12 foot to score two, but this ice is very quick. Don't want to overthrow it. Yeah, you want to use the sweepers here. You got Kosuke and Tsuyoshi. It's ready to sweep this one coast to coast if you have to. Yeah, they're just keeping it clean, so I think they like it. I think it's got more than enough weight. Look at this one slide. Glides into the house, still going. It's got some steam, but I think it's going to come to rest. Yes, it does. So after a moment or two of a heart flutter, it comes to rest in the back eight. So Japan now. First deuce of the game, and they take the lead. After four ends of play, it's Japan three, China with the hammer. 
with two. So, Kosuke Morozumi gets us underway in end number five of this 10 end gold medal final. Japan finally cracks the deuce they've been looking for. Sander talked about hammer efficiency, their ability to score more than one point with the hammer, and they finally achieved it in end number four, Sander. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, good, good end, good open end, more control. Pretty close to scoring 3 2, but if, yep. it, if it wasn't for Lou Ray's very nice double. Of course, Lou Ray has all shots available to him. He has played every position uh, for Team China at the Pacifics. Played uh, three years as a lead, one year as a second, two years as a third, and this will be his, uh, or is his fourth year as skip for Team China at the Pacific Championship. Okay, so. Next stop, the coaching box, perhaps, or team physio. I mean, he's sort of running out of places <laughs> to play on the team here. There is uh, Kosuke Morozumi. I'm sure he'll be coach next. Uh, seems like the natural progression. Uh, hopefully, we'll see Lou Ray play a few more years before he retires. Had a great run at the Olympics in Sochi. Oh, I want to bring it up near to that stone into the button area. And just corner freezes it. Sang Jielang. So I was worried a bit about rotation of the stone. Quite a light handle on this one, but curling hard now with that light handle coming up to rest just on top of that Japanese stone. So, <laughs> well, here we go again, Sander, after a relatively open fourth end. Once again, we see a series of freezes and pretty good ones. So Yoshi Yamaguchi's turn. Oh, I want to kill that yellow. Yeah, Morozumi sweeping it hard and does get it out of the ring. So that's a pretty good stone there. Repositions everything. Yeah, it can be important to make sure that yellow goes away. Don't want to keep too many opponent stones lying around without a hammer. We've uh, definitely discussed that this week. Well, this Chinese team can certainly score in bunches Whoa. in their semi-final against Mark, Randy Shen and his team from Chinese Taipei. Four. They scored five in the Whoa. first Whoa. end, so <laughs> there is definitely danger in letting rocks Whoa. accumulate. Whoa. It's about three quarters and he rolls over. Cozy's up beside his own stone. Okay, bumper was wondering if they were going to just try and double this off on the high side, but it's going to be bumper weight. Good, good. Wanted to 
sit in front of that uh, Chinese stone, but they roll over into the open. So after dropping the two, maybe a chance here for China to get their deuce back. the guard sits up. that's actually not the worst spot to place that one yeah it's kind of like a pair of eggs sunny side up right beside each other in the pan tough angle for the Japanese to remove them they're gonna have to hit it pretty much where Morozumi's got his brush but actually quite quiet weight here so it's just repositioning here by the Japanese yeah he's looking to play a little hit and roll Definitely don't want to over curl and jam on the back rock. They have, but uh, the yellow does not stick around. Good thing for Japan. Yeah, Shimizu nearly jamming on the back stone. Good sweeping by his team, saved that one. Stagger of the rocks. Less of a chance for the Chinese to get a big inside roll. There's Zhu Xiaoming. And our most, most experienced player in the field here at the Pacific uh, Championship. This is his game number 134. Is that right? Still a couple of people ahead of him, though, on the, on the list of most games played at this championship. <laughs> Do you have any, could you have any guess who would be number one? I would say number one has to be Hugh Milliken. Yep, and sure it is. 190 games. That's a lot of curling. Currently a vice president at the World Curling Federation for this region. Piece of this stone available for Shimizu. Right cut. Right cut. Right cut. Hugh Milliken from yeah. Australia. Oh, very nearly wrecked on that guard. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that would have made a big difference crashing the guard or making the double. That's uh, oh, that's a potential three-point swing right there, folks. Watch how close this comes to the guard. <laughs> Couldn't be closer. <laughs> Get a great look at it here. <laughs> Just kind of left it halfway down, then about halfway down. Uh-oh, called the sweep. Just saved it. Didn't have to be that close, but uh, oh. they made it exciting for oh. us, right? Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 His uh, sister has also, also plays curling. Okay. Amy Shimizu did uh, represent Japan at the World Championship also back in uh, 2013. So curling very much a family affair. The Morozumi brothers here. The Becker brothers on Team New Zealand. Yeah, it's funny when you you meet people even today, you meet youngsters just in their teens and uh, their family names <laughs> awfully uh, familiar. <laughs> well, we talked about uh, Korean women's team coach Peter Gallant, his son Brett well-known curler in Canada, so it is definitely something that passes from generation to generation. Mentioned the Becker brothers and Team New Zealand, their father Peter here as a coach, so yeah, it's the kind of sport that uh, once you get involved with it, it tends to involve the whole family. <coughs> Japan has a corner hidden behind that center guard, but enough of it for China to make a play. I don't think China would 
mind blanking the fifth end though yeah. too much. I agree. It's pretty much the same situation we had uh, in the women's final. But uh, Wang Bing Yu uh, ended up missing the blank attempt. Knowles hit the, the shot for the zero up on the board and kind of cost her, I think. I agree. Did it twice, actually. Yeah, two missed blank attempts. Did this ever crash on the guard, Hans? Oh, it's all over it. It's going to jam on the back to boot. Will it roll back on the rings? Not quite. Chinese stone. The only positive out of that shot is that they leave their own stone way, way wide on the rings. So Japan's going to have to make a play on it. But uh, yeah, a bit of a surprise there from uh, from Lu Rei in China. You can see about two thirds of that one, but it wasn't even close. Crashed the guard pretty hard. Oh. And this is a pretty key shot. This too. It sure is. Um, Roll out, and you leave the blank for China, and they get control of the even ends. Stick around, you force China, and uh, tied game, hammer in six. I agree. You've got no execution tolerance at all at the high side. You've got the whole house to roll to. I wouldn't worry too much about setting up and leaving the double. Just get a second stone in the ring somehow. Oh, and he's done just that. He's hit half of it and rolled out. This is an inexcusable error. Yeah, I wonder if it just uh, tends to run a little bit straight when you get all the way out there, because I've seen that many times this week. Oh, well, you get out there way on the wings, you get onto some fresh pebble, and it just maybe just tracks a little bit more than they would have expected. But uh, yeah, bad mistake. I don't know if they were worried about jamming on the back yellow or. Well, as I said, I don't want to belabor the point. You know, it's, these are all tough shots, but when you've got 12 feet of house to roll to, I wouldn't be worrying too much about the jam or the inside roll. Well, we'll see if uh, Lu Ray can do what uh, Wang Bing Yu was not able to do. That is like the end. Oh. 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 That's executed to perfection. <laughs> kind of <laughs> close to the jam. <laughs> Almost jammed, but uh, no problem there. So it is a blank end. So a bit of a let off there for China. As we go to the fifth end break, the players will have a brief rest and a chance to chat with their coaches. But uh, China blanks end number five. They'll have hammer in the sixth at the midway point of this gold medal match. It's Japan three, China two.
So let's have a look at the highlights of the first half of this game. In the first end, China's got the hammer, but uh, this looks pretty tough for Lou Ray. Oh! Hey! Trying a tough double raise, but scatters rocks everywhere at the end of the all. The smoke clears and Japan steals one. <laughs> In the third end, it's a turnabout. Very difficult shot here for Japan's Yosuke Morizumi is trying to thread the needle, hit this on the nose, and somehow score two, but just rolls away off the button. That yellow stone at the back of the button, after a quick look, is agreed as the closest. So China steals the end, and China takes a two to one lead. Then in the fourth end, we talked about Team Japan's hammer efficiency, their ability to score multiple points with the hammer. And it's a draw for two for Japan's Yusuke Morozumi. Just has to hit the 12 foot. Stone slides a little deeper than they would have been comfortable about, but it comes to rest in the back eight. So it's a big score of two for Japan. And that put them in a three to two lead. <laughs> And that three to two margin is exactly where we stand because the fifth end was blanked. So as we return to the action here at the Wiesung Curling Center, hope you're enjoying us. It's live action from the Pacific Asia Curling Championships 2016. I'm Hans Fraunlob and I'm joined by world mixed curling champion Sander Rovag from Norway and well, it's kind of what you expect from a gold medal match. Kasuki Morozumi is at 88% after the first half of the game. Oh. Sander, we would expect this game to be close, and <laughs> sure is. Yeah, we're getting uh, exactly what we were looking for, value for money. Uh, it's a tight game. Japan has that one-point lead, but China has hammer. We've had some entertainment, lots of great shots, a couple of slip-ups, but uh, all in all, very, very excited for the second half. Big smile there from Kosuke. We'd mentioned earlier in the week he's been recently elected by his fellow athletes to join the Athletes Commission of the World Curling Federation. Sang Jilang at 75%. So that commission provides the <coughs> rule makers and the administrators of the game some input from the athletes' point of view about the evolution of the sport. So big honor there for Kosuke. And also the winner of the Colin Campbell Award last year at the World Men's Curling Championship. Awarded to players are, yeah, represent fair play and camaraderie. Yes, good also sportsmanship. Also skills on the ice. Absolutely right. So he's a very well-liked player internationally and justifiably so. The whole team really has yeah. been, uh, they've been around for so long. Same team, played about 10 years together, so. Yeah, and to know everyone and everyone knows them. Yeah, and that's quite a rare thing in curling too, isn't it? For a team to stay together as a unit for a long period of time. It's a huge commitment, not just for themselves as individuals, but for their friends, their family, their partners. It's, uh, it can be a long grind. So for this team to stay together as a unit, it's uh, saying something about their commitment to excellence. Especially after losing six finals. That's those are the kind of things oh, tend to deteriorate oh, the team. Oh, 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 well, they can do, but oh, I think um, oh, your interview oh, yesterday, oh, Sander, oh, with Yosuke at, after the end of the semifinal, for me was particularly telling. Oh, you know, I think this team doesn't feel that their journey is complete until they've had a chance to step onto the stage at the Olympics and they believe that they can get to the podium in the Olympics in their heart of hearts, and they're not going to let go of their dream until they get there. They've watched the uh, popularity of curling in Japan skyrocket, especially for the women. But as you said earlier, it's been 1998 since a men's team's made it to the Olympics for Japan, and they want to be that team. I'm not going to take anything away from China, of course. Uh, very nice bunch as well. Yeah, they are. But uh, I think it'd be. Uh, I think it's easy to say that probably a lot of people in the building here and watching will 
probably might want to say Japan win this time. China's won so many gold medals. and I was going to say, if only for the reason that they've been runner-up so many times. Exactly. It's, uh, as a sports fan as a, and as a player, you, you'd kind of think it should be them, their, their time soon. Well, there's 108 years for the Chicago Cubs. Is this the year for Yusuke Morozumi? Oh, look at that. One, two, three, triple takeout and rolling onto the rings. Wow. What a fantastic shot by Xiao Chang. That is an excellent shot. <laughs> Just changes everything in one stone. Perfect angles. One, two, three Japanese stones just go spinning out of the rings. Didn't throw this huge either. It wasn't a rocket, but absolutely precision placement. Great shot. Well, that's the way he had to throw to make that roll. That's true. And uh, forced a run back here. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Anything you can do, I can do better. That is a great shot right back to back. That's a great answer. <laughs> From uh, Tetsuro Yamaguchi, <laughs> just <laughs> fantastic. Well, from lots of rocks in play, we have a barren desert in two stones. Amazing. Our side. Our side. Our side. Shows the talent of the both of these teams. Oh. That was a good shot by oh. So Chang. Only his second appearance at this uh, championships. Oh. Of course, he was a part of. Uh, the squad that went to the 2014 edition in uh, Karuzawa, where uh, Zhang Jiliang was skipping the team. Yep, and did an excellent job. Yeah, won the gold. Yep, can't be better than that. I'm sure So Zhang would like to keep his record of only winning gold medals at the Pacifics. Yeah, that's pretty high standard to maintain, but. Uh, <laughs> Pretty good achievement. <laughs> Here's Xu Xiaoming. So Chang has also uh, skipped oh. at a Pacific Asia oh. Junior oh. Curling Championship oh. and picked up oh. a gold. So oh. two championship appearances, two gold, and oh. 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 the third one now and the final. Yeah. So it's going to be three for three. Oh. 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 Is he the golden answer for China? Oh. Should mention the experience of this Chinese team. Hard to imagine now that uh, China didn't start competing internationally as a nation until 2002. And now their skill level here is Tetsuro Shimizu at 65%. Competing with distinction at every level of the sport. Well, although to be fair, I haven't seen a Chinese seniors team yet, but they're certainly winning Junior competitions, competing strongly in mixed doubles, men's, women's. <coughs> and they will be the host of the 2022 Winter Olympics. Yeah, slight mistake there from uh, Shimizu. Yep. That's, that's a couple Liu now Liu from oh. him. Hasn't been razor sharp, that's for sure. Oh, he's uh, been all up and down this week. Uh, had a really good game against Korea last oh. night. Oh. But now... Uh, oh. A couple of simple mistakes. This allowing China to come around the corner here in the sixth end, try and set up for their deuce. Well clear of the guard, and it's sliding deep into the rings. So and again, we're seeing that from the center line hard, towards the wing. Hard to bury inside out. And, and deep. And deep, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Does track a little bit, and it goes uh, is a bit keener because of that. It has uh, doesn't have quite as long a way to get there. Yeah, I was... I don't know if this has anything to do with it or not, but I was talking to head ice tech Mark Callum this morning, and he was telling me that as they were scraping the ice overnight that there was definitely a difference between where the players actually slide, and so the slide's actually wearing the pebble down differently than in other parts of the sheet. So maybe there's a tiny little hill there that it's hard for the rocks to climb, but regardless, the players are having a really hard time getting big curl inside out, so chance now for Japan to make a play. Would you really like to stick around here? Sure would. Safely, on the nose, good, good stone there by Morozumi. Nice shot. There's another game 
in the arena today, huh? That's true. The bronze medal match is underway simultaneously. So have we got a progress score on that one, Sander? Yeah, we do. Um, Korea, Chinese Taipei, Korea had hammer. Scored two in the first. Taipei picked up four in the second end to really shock the Koreans. But um, now Korea has scored five consecutive points after that. So they're up seven shots to four after five ends of play. Wow. <laughs> there must be a few rocks in play over in that game as well. But we return to our feature match, the gold medal final. Lou Ray, 55%. That's pretty low percentage, but there's been so many rocks in play. There have been very few straightforward shots for either skip. This one's pretty straightforward, though. And he makes it right in the nose. So this game really started with a hiss and a roar. The first three ends, there was just piles and piles and piles of rocks around center guards and things just calming down a little bit here in the mid part of the game. Fifth end was blanked and uh, now in the sixth end again, well, seem to be shaping up for another one. Well I think the difference is at the start of the game, both teams just looking to score yeah. and uh, now they're thinking more about the scoreboard and managing the ends. Um, Japan thinking, yeah, we'd like to uh, force them in the fifth. It's China thinking we'd like to blank. Now kind of the opposite. China would like to score there too. And uh, Japan trying to play a low open. So it's more of a tactical game, a game now for the second half of uh, this final. Good stone there by Mr. Morozumi. Lou Ray is going to throw a blank that he doesn't really want to do. He will blank the end to keep last rock into the seventh if he makes it, but Sander was just outlining to you that would give Team Japan control of the even ends. There are 10 ends in this game. We will play an extra end if the scores are tied. We saw one of those last night. First things first, though, for Lou Ray. Big weight. Pounds the Japanese stone, and China blanks the end. So back-to-back -back blanks for Team China. After six ends of play, the tension's building in this gold medal match. It's Japan three, China with the hammer. Two points, seventh end coming up. Stay with us. Well, it's the final round of play here. Last game of the tournament, the men's gold medal match. Japan versus China. We're expecting a close contest. These teams have faced each other in finals so many times, and once again, very little to choose between them. Japan's up one, but China's got the hammer. And I think we might have just uh, a bit of a tactical end here to Kosuke. I believe just coming up a bit heavy on a center guard attempt. Slipping into the rings and allowing China to play the hit. As you said, Hans, uh, they didn't really want to blank this extent, but sort of had to. And yeah. uh, because of that, they would really like to blank the seventh end as well. And with that slip up from Kosuke, that's sort of where the end is heading. Now 
having brought the play into the rings unintentionally. You have to keep the play in the rings. This one's got a curl. That's has he got contact? Yes, he does. Yeah, but rolls out and... I wonder what China might do. He will throw the corner. Interesting. Yeah, so they'll... they'll what they're saying with, the, with that call as well, we'll take an easy deuce if we can get it. But uh, if not, we're going to black. The corner guard is the maximum amount of stones we would like to put in play. We will have one guard. <laughs> it will only be one guard, and the number is one. <laughs> and Japan's probably going to look to peel it. And that's probably ha going to happen a couple of times. Oh, well, actually, now Japan might try to hit and roll into the house. Coming that tight. Yeah. Morizumi confirming that that is the call. Switching turns now. We're going to the out turn. I have another fact for you, Hans. All right, bring it. As we said, Japan's been in six finals, but they have never had the lead in the game after six ends of play in neither of the finals. Never. Never. After okay. six okay. ends have they had the lead, and now they do. A one point okay. lead. Okay. So, a day of breakthroughs maybe for Team Japan. There's the hit. They roll across to the uh, eight foot circle on the left hand side of our screen. So, job done for Yamaguchi. Uh, a couple of firsts anyway today. First steal and a Pacific Asia Championship <laughs> final in seven tries. We yeah. yeah. stole that one point in the first end and well, not a lead after six ends. Well, so. well. Yeah. Well, let's see if they can close it out. China's got the hammer, so some heavy lifting to do yet for Team Japan. Right in the nose. This plays right into China's hands. They would dearly love to blank in number seven and keep the hammer into the eighth and set themselves up for the tenth. Well, Japan can't really do much about it no. <laughs> at this point. <laughs> It'd be very aggressive and slightly stupid, actually, to start putting up a center guard here. Yeah. Unless they wanted to take the risk to give away two and get control of the hammer, but uh, I don't think you'd see many teams doing it. No, well, it's cat and mouse time now. Both teams know what the other one's got in mind. No secrets here. Talked about the experience of this Chinese team, Sander. Here's my fact for you, my self-interested fact of the day. Go ahead. I've competed at this event against Zhu Xiaoming and Zhang Jialang. That makes them <coughs> long-time curlers. <laughs> well, when was the last time you competed at this event, Hans? The last time I competed at this event was 2007, representing New Zealand. Well, that's not too long ago. Yeah, long enough. Sir <laughs> Shimizu? Super tidy end number seven after Morizumi's guard came into the house. All the play's been in the house ever since. And this one is trending towards a blank. So we never wanted to ask our viewers to leave the game. But, you know, if you wanted to go and uh, prepare the popcorn or, you know, freshen up for the last few ends, this would be a good time to duck out because it's going to be pretty up and down for the next few shots. Yeah, it's kind of uh, the thing about blank end is though it's that's the huge build up to <laughs> for the last shot and then which you, hold you have your to make <laughs> to blank it if you ever miss it it's like you've wasted a whole end yes for the purpose of blanking and um, so just because of that it adds just a little bit of pressure okay. on that last stone so get the popcorn fast and make sure you're back here for the last one folks how about that This one rolling across the rings and deep. Changes the shot for China. Stays in the rings. Uh, we certainly don't want to see any red flashing lights here. <laughs> Too right. We did see one of those in the women's gold medal match. And what Sanders talking about there would be a hog line violation. 
not releasing the stone before the near hog line. Right, for them, uh, for those who remember watching the Olympics in Sochi, this Chinese team, uh, I believe, hogged two stones in the bronze final against Sweden. Really? And in what was a pretty epic game. If you ever want to rewatch a curling then, that would be uh, one for the history books. So one lonely stone in play here on number seven. Yusuke Morozumi looks to remove it. Wants to hang around. So this end, as we said, being played very much up and down, but looking ahead, China does manage to blanket. I can assure you that end number eight will look very, very different. Morzum is a first appearance at an international championship was a World Junior Curling Championships in 2001. It was alternate for Hiroki Kashawagi. Yeah, Hiro Kashawagi. Very fine curler from Japan. He's also represented Japan in mixed doubles. Been to a Worlds. Morizumi was 16 at the time <laughs> and was uh, able to witness uh, a young Brad Gushu picking up the gold medal back then at what was a oh, test oh, event oh for the oh 2002 oh Olympics oh in Ogden, Utah. Oh 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 been a fantastic experience for a young Yusuke Morizumi. Once again, right in the nose. Just look to nose hit this one. Want to keep it in the rings, though. Nice shooting. Okay, so if you're out in the kitchen making the popcorn, get back to the TV right now because here's the blank attempt coming up from Lou Ray. You don't want to miss this. It's the only exciting shot of the whole end. That's right. Really. China's blank the fifth and the sixth. Didn't want to blank the sixth, but they do want to blank this one. Nose hit would be disaster for China after all this hard work. So lots of pressure on Lou Ray. Tried to build the drama, Hans, but... Did my best, but <laughs> Lou Ray makes it routinely yet again, so that's three perfect blanks for China. And they've done their job. They've set themselves up to attack in end number eight. So here we go, folks. Drama time after seven ends of play. China still got the hammer, but Japan leads it three to two. Turn to action here in the Wee Sung Curling Center. Gold medal game. So Kosuke Morizumi will not want to be, well, are they going to bring the play into the rings? I think so. I, China's going to put up the corner guard uh, yeah, for that's sure. That's so true. 
There's no point in putting up the center. You might as well place it right there and throw the center on the next shot. Now I mentioned uh, Yosuke Morizumi's first appearance at a championship. Now, uh, I think you I might remember Blue yeah. Ray's first what? appearance at the Pacifics. Yeah. Yep. Kree, kree. Was back in 2002. I mentioned that was the first time that a Chinese team ever competed internationally. And uh, har, 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 har. remember talking har. to the guys. Um, har, har, har. Har, har, this is in Queenstown, New Zealand. They're their English was much better than my Mandarin, and I remember talking to them, and they were explaining where they're from. They said they're from a small town called Harbin. I said, okay, yeah, where's that? And he said, the north of China. So, you know, how many people live there? And I said, eight, eight. And I thought, okay, I'm from a town of 80,000 people or so. so. Eight million people. <laughs> and I remember thinking to myself, I had an instant flash in my mind of, eight million Chinese curlers, and I thought, the game is about to change, and it certainly has. Well, I can tell you, you oh, yeah. weren't very nice oh, yeah. against the Chinese when you played against them. <laughs> Maybe not that year, but they've uh, certainly gotten their own back over yeah, the years. Hey. Oh. Oh, yeah. Shaming Zhu actually skipped the team oh. back then uh, at the age of 18. Oh, 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 oh. Well, it's, it's been oh. a while. It has. Oh. Trying to remove both stones, but they roll past the shooter. But quiet weight keeps that stone on the edge of the 12 foot. Yeah, I saw Xiao Ming before the game, or saw him last night actually, and he said, you know, why aren't you still playing? And I said, have you seen my birth certificate? <laughs> but I can tell you, as I said, in 2002, the curling world, and I mean literally the world, had no idea that Chinese players were even playing the game. They showed up to compete. And we could see immediately their slides were technically good, so they'd clearly been studying and practicing. Had a lot of work to do on their strategy, which was, to be blunt, really weak back then, but they've invested the time in coaching. They've gone to North America and to Europe to compete, and uh, they are among the best in the world now. They uh, did beat Hugh Milliken in yep. their second game of that championship. So that's, that's Australia, though. <laughs> All right. All right. Heart. Well, I can tell Heart. you. Um, Sorry to my Australian friends that are maybe <laughs> listening today. I'm just teasing. Heart. Heart. But what Chang has uh, done effectively by playing the hit roll out to the wing is forced Japan to make a hit out on the wing and open the scoring area for China. I'm a little surprised they play the hit and roll. You could have drawn around the corner, but uh, maybe again, just being a little bit cautious and again, looking for an easy deuce or the blank, keeping the blank alive, as you could say. But if Japan can get a little bit of separation here on this stone by Yamaguchi and maybe tuck behind the corner guard, then you know, you'd have to say that the force is definitely on. Well, that's the thing. Um, even being forced here for China isn't terrible because you'll no. tie up the game. You could force Japan back in nine, come home with hammer, yep. score two, and you win the game. So true. I, I wouldn't mind seeing China just, just take a tiny bit more risk, but it's still early in the end. Yeah, this one's evenly poised. South Chang, we saw his awesome Raised triple takeout earlier in the game. Oh, you gotta stick around here. So Chang. Oh boy. Yeah, that's a big, big mistake. And you can hear the frustration in the background from the voices of the Chinese. They know they wanted to keep that one in. Decision time for Morizumi. <laughs> Do you peel the guard and force China yeah. to blank this end? Try and force them in nine? I, th I think so. That seems to be the call. If this was uh, Morizumi's first rock, sure, you go and split the house and get the force that way, but um, to get China to blank the eighth end, I think is huge. To ever force China to score a one in the ninth end, they'll be tied up with hammer in the last end coming home. <laughs> 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 ah, nice double 
<laughs> Shimizu. Yeah, he said I had that one all the way. I was gonna stuff it. I I meant to do that. <laughs> Bit of good fortune for the Japanese there. Chu Xiaoming. Definitely has been two very different halves of the game, though, Hans. Yeah, sure has. There's been massive attacks for the first half of the game and in the second half of the game. Button down defense. <laughs> Morizumi undecided about whether he wants to leave it in the rings or not. Decides ultimately to leave it in the rings. Could have swept it out. Interesting as a back-end player, you have those quick mental debates with yourself whether to sweep a stone or not. Peels it off, nothing in play, so Japan's definitely saying to China, okay, going to force you to take one or blank. So the strategy for the Japanese is crystal clear. They're going to try and attack China, try to get a force in the ninth. In other words, get China to take a single point. And play the tenth and final end, tied up with the hammer. China, on the other hand, I suspect Sander, if they wind up having to blank the eighth, would probably be all out to blank the ninth as well if they could. Yeah, you would think so. Lou Ray. The cat and mouse game continues. That's what we love about this sport. The strategy and the tactics. Lots of different ways to play an end and set yourself up for the end of a game. So now it's the turn of Japanese skip Yusuke Morizumi. Good stone. So now it's a game of nerves for both teams. Who can hold their nerve the longest? It's a bit like a game of chicken. You're trying to wait out the other team, wait them out, and then try to pounce and make your move. <laughs> so now it's the turn of Lou Ray. Well, it's uh like uh, the seventh Heart, then. Yeah. All this Heart. for for what? Heart. For the blank. You gotta make the last Heart. shot. Heart. You gotta make this one. Yep. Yeah. And the reason we've turned into a straightforward up and down end was that decision by Yusuke Morizumi to peel a corner guard as opposed to going around it. Would have made a play around that one to try and lie to and keep the house split and get a force, but he decided that their best path to success was to force China to blank this end and take it into nine. And I guess the rationale there is if China scores in nine, even if it's more than one, they would have the hammer on the top. Yeah, well, I disagree, Hans. I think it was uh, when Koski put his first guard in the house that set up the blank. <laughs> well, on this end, yes, although we do have to remember that uh, you know, the Chinese did throw up a corner guard, so they were sure, sure. starting the end to try to score. I'm only teasing. Okay, fair enough. I took the bait. Well done. Well played. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Japan tried to put up the center guard and force some, uh, some play, but uh, Koski just came out a little heavy and China started hitting. So the plan has been the blank from the very start, but uh, you're right. They did put up, put up a corner to see if they could get an easy dues after all, but uh, always keeping the blank in mind. So Lou Ray, blanked five, blanked six, blanked seven. Will he blank eight? Is this four blanks in a row? Yep. Didn't even realize. Yep. Mark. Whoa. Whoa, clean. Whoa. 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 
Shows you how precious they consider last rock advantage. And he just tickles it out, but with lots of weight. So China once again blanks the end. This low scoring pitchers duel continues. Two ends now to play. We'll play an extra end if we're tied after regulation. But China hanging on to that hammer, looking to do something with it in the ninth. It's Japan three and China two. So we're underway in end number nine. Watching live curling action from Wee Sung, Korea. It is the men's gold medal match. Who's it gonna be, folks? Is it gonna be Japan? Is it gonna be China? Right now, you could toss a coin. Japan's got the lead on the scoreboard, but China's got the hammer. Couldn't say that either team has got the ascendancy right now. Tsang Jialang at 77% through eight ends. Pass the guard, here we go. Game on. Heart, 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 heart. Straddles the center line. Nice touch there by Zhang. So after four ends of quite frankly pretty unexciting tactics, looks like here in end number nine. We're going to see some kind of action. Japan through the center guard, inviting the Chinese to use it, and they did. Kusuke Morozumi is just trying to hide one. Oh, look at that! Oh, great, great line call again from uh, Big Brother Yosuke. I'm pretty sure the call was a freeze. And good communication between the sweepers and the skipper, and uh, we're able to get it past it. Yeah, good awareness there from the whole team. Really good finish. If you can <laughs> look at be that. able to fully bury a stone back four behind a yellow top four. There's Zhang Jialang trying to follow this one down now. Salin Zhu on the brush is trying to drag this one down. This is a very important stone for the Chinese. They want to get it past their own stone in the top of the forefoot, but they just rub it. Great weight, just needed to sneak by the guard, but he barely rubs it, and you can just see his disappointment. Who knows how close that was, but chance here now for the Japanese to make a play at it. Zhang is quite a an intense player, sure is. You could see a lot more of that when he was uh, skipping the team two years ago. Just a, just a killer on the ice. Siyoshi Yamaguchi having a nice game at 89%. Well, I assume there's no big surprise in telling you uh, that uh, this is the lowest scoring final Japan's ever played. No, I am not surprised at all. Maybe that's the way to go. Well, they seem to have tried everything else to try and win a Pacific Championship, and they never have, so maybe playing tight and close. Is that going to be the formula that gets them their top of the podium finish that they've been chasing for so long? Chance for Zhou Chang, he's at 77%. Reposition these stones. Zhang 
Zhang and Zhu trying to hold the line. Oh, just by the front. Double take out. Nice dot the shot there from Zhao. China lies too. Great brushing there from his teammates. Look how close to the front guard they come. They just get past it. And the contact is perfect. I think they're looking to play about backline weight at this. I thought I heard them say Ju. Japanese for 10. So in the uh, weight control parlance of curlers, that's backline weight. A system that was uh, implemented by Chinese coach. Chinese coach Marcel Rock and uh, the fur before. say that innovation is taking good ideas and applying them and so yeah look at that good stone there that's a really good shot nice touch by uh Tsuyoshi. repositions the chinese stones but crucially leaves his own stone in the middle of them so it makes it difficult for the chinese to remove it and you see uh, you can see lu ray's plan here do not want to mess around too much here in the ninth end want to keep uh chance for the blank so big call coming up here for japan china's lying too you've got your own stone yep. kind of in front yep. of it bit of a decision here for them yeah, i'm sure you can just play a double but do you really want to give china the blank here well if you're yosuke or morizumi you know that Lou Ray has been blanking these ends with a purpose. He wants to have the hammer in the 10th, so they're trying to force the issue a bit here now, and so Tetsuro Shimizu is going to be asked to throw a center guard. He's going to be happy to show the Chinese an outside corner of his own stone in the 8-foot. Well, being one up without, or one down with the hammer, Pretty much a coin flip. It uh, comes a little bit down to team preference, but uh, I'd say Japan could really could probably afford to put some stones in play, try and get the force, and uh, just make sure that the worst case scenario is two, yep. never three. Okay. And I have to give up two, not, not so bad. I'll be one <laughs> down hammer. Great chance to win the game. That one slips a little too deep. Are we looking at outturn here, Sander, on the front stone, or what do we think of the call? No, that's what it looks like, Hans. And Xu Xiaoming. 81% at third. This one is tracking a little bit on the center line. They're looking for a bit more curl. They catch it very thin, and they jam on their own. Morizumi now sweeping it. I'd love to get out of the rings. It comes to rest half in the back 12 foot, so that Chinese stone is hanging around. So, what a turnaround there. Gentle downweight hit. Still not out of danger yet for either team. Well, the good part with the, the weight they were playing there, they saved that yellow stone at the back. Yeah. That's going to be a, a, a concern for Morizumi. You can play the double here. Top four, the one in the back 12. Yeah, you certainly could. Seems to be favoring the inside roll, so it's a bit of a shift of gears now for the Japanese. Perhaps Morizumi sensing the chance to, you know, increase the chance of a force by stacking them a bit. Well, I'm not sure if I'm crazy about this call. No, I don't love it either, to be honest. If you, if you roll just half buried here, there might, might be a chance for China to play that very short run double. Roll the shooter to the wing. Sit three in the house. Catch it thin and they're going to roll it away. So, door opens again for China. There's going to be plenty of yellows in play. Yeah, half shot there from Shimizu. Now China's blanked four ends in a row. They've got the hammer. Is this the time now to go for it? Looks 
Looks like they're going to make a play on that Japanese stone on the 12 foot, and that would leave the Chinese lining second, third, and fourth shot, depending where they roll. But if you're uh, Yasuki Morozumi from Japan, you are getting very, very, very nervous. Chinese would love to save this one. They don't want to lose this shooter. Right on the nose, so job done there for Zhu Xiaoming. And flashing red light warnings now for Team Japan. <laughs> No easy doubles anywhere. You might consider drawing for second shot. Having a look at that. You could hit and roll the one on the left-hand side, but that is a long roll. I think if you're Japan, you want to be lying two after this stone. A wise curling coach once told me the best guard is second shot. So, gold medal match and probably the key shot of the game coming up right here, folks. It's, uh, it's pressure time. Certainly is. Nose hit is no good. Well, after losing six finals, you might think that pressure might get to this team. Well, we'll see how they handle it here. Well, does it count out the one in the back of the rings? I don't think it does. I think China is lying third shot. Just see it at the very bottom of our screen. There's a Chinese stone in the back 12 foot. So golden opportunity here for China. Morozumi does not get the inside roll, and worse, he doesn't count out the Chinese stone in the back, so good chance here for China to lie two and maybe three, and if the Chinese were ever to score three on this end, it would be a massive turnaround in this game. Red stones belong to Japan. But that is the shortest run back imaginable. The Yellowstone offers no protection at all. There's a great look at it. And we're almost certain that that stone in the back is third shot. And with Lou Ray after blanking four ends in a row, he knows that this is his chance. That is pretty close to perfect, but certainly leaves Japan a double takeout, and the thing is probably not a triple. So the decision for Japan is make the relatively easy double and basically concede the two. And that seems to be the play. Yep, I don't think they have much uh, else choice here. No, anything else would be brave to the point of calling it suicidal, so. Now, hit a little high side, it's really safe, but yeah. you would, it'd be very nice to play the nose hit in here and try and sit I can't really see, but I think you might be sitting shot stone if you get the nose hit. Well, that would help the Japanese cause, to be sure. But uh, if you ever... Just a hair on the inside, uh, the yellow sticks around and then... Yeah. 
three might be in play, so yeah. First priority is to remove two Chinese stones. One, two Chinese stones go rocketing out of the rings. Depending where this spins, I think that Japanese stone is shot in the top eight foot or top 12 foot. So very nice stone there by Yusuke Morosumi. Breathing a little bit easier, but uh, still a shot for two on the cards here for China. See the Chinese stones being removed out of the rings, and that stone hangs around for shot. The thing is now, of course, that China can't nose hit this and score two because uh, that other red Japanese stone would count it out, so they're going to need some kind of an inside roll here to score. We see Zhu taking a look at it. Not much of an inside roll, maybe a quarter of a rock, but still something to think about. Yeah, playing the inside out mm, is probably not a bad idea. You've seen too many rocks coming down the wing on the on the out turn, just not curling much. Some delicate final stone coming at you here at end number nine for Lou Ray. Chance for China to score two and take the lead. Talked about this track being straight inside out. Is it going to curl enough? They really want it to curl. They get a tiny oh, piece and, and just the back. Oh, oh my goodness. Unbelievable. Is it a steal of two for Japan? It might be. The players are looking at it. They repositioned the stone at the back of the 12 foot. I'm almost certain Japan's got one. Have they got two? What a boil over that would be. You're going to take a long look at this. This is the gold medal final after all. You, that for sure. So that confirms that it's absolutely one for Japan. Now have they stolen two? Sander, can you believe it? I can't actually. <laughs> wow. Talked about how straight that inside out track was. Swept it a little bit early, but not much. Sumizu saying, yeah, we got one. <laughs> Kosuke Morizumi going, oh, I can't believe we got that. <laughs> now they're going to measure for that second point. Wow, huge relief for the Japanese. They know what a huge bullet they dodged there. They should have dropped two, and instead they've stolen one and maybe two, and that might clinch the game for them if it's a steal of two. Well, we talked about how Lou Ray always hands the shots to his sweepers. He didn't do it this time, and it really cost them. We're going to see now the official measure in Japanese third Shimizu cozying up to share the view of the dial. Well, still a one, leaves uh, Japanese two up. Still a ch good chance for China to be in the game, but if it's a steal of two, I mean, that's, that's huge. It'd be very it. hard for China. It is a second point, so it's a steal of two to Japan. Unbelievable. Wow. Disaster for China, but delight for Japan. Out of absolutely nowhere, it's a steal of two for Japan, and with the tenth and final end to come, Japan with a huge three-point lead to close this out and maybe win their first ever Pacific Asia Championship. <laughs> So after that unbelievable turn of events in end number nine, no surprises for what Kosuke Morizumi is going to do with his first shot in 10. This one's rocketed to the backboards. So now it's countdown for Team Japan. They've got an unbelievable and unexpected three-point lead going into the 10th and final end of play. And Lou Ray and his Chinese teammates, they just have to be absolutely stunned. Well, you know why I think... Uh he told Yusuke Morizumi that he'd be one down with a hammer in the 10th end, he'd take it because the yeah. best he's ever had coming into a 10th end in a Pacific Asia Championship final is being two down with hammer. So, so now he's three up without. That's, <laughs> that's uh, the 
by far the best shot he's ever gotten at the gold medal. Well, Japan in a place that they've never been at this competition. So close that they can taste it. China throws up the corner guard and Kosuke Morizumi is just going to throw another one into the hack. Ch Japan wants no rocks in play at all. Won't even bother trying the tick shot. Instead, they're going to rely on their big hitters, Yamaguchi and Shimizu, to try and double clear their way to the victory. Oh, you got to feel for the Chinese. They've scrapped and scrapped and scrapped and held onto the hammer so tenaciously, and it looked like they finally paid off in the ninth. They had their shot for the two. And then to tick the stone, but then just to have the unbelievable bad fortune to clip their own stone off at the back and give Japan two. Bad enough to give up one in that situation, but to give up two. Sang Jilung's done everything he can. He sets two perfect corner guards, but now the free guard zone portion of the end is over, so it's bombs away for Japan. Well, so Yoshi Yamaguchi now is going to be asked just to start clearing stones. Well, we know he can play the peels quite well in both uh, Yamaguchi and Shimizu, but <laughs> there's got to be some nerves in play here. Well... <laughs> You're right, even with a three-point lead, when you've been a six-time bridesmaid at this event, a tiny little part of the back of your brain is telling you it can't be possible. Yeah, I was <laughs> setting the hack, throwing these peels, no, thinking, ooh, if I knows yeah. one of these, the three might be in play. And uh, it's very easy to be sitting in the hack thinking, oh, we're so close, we're so close. Yeah. And, and not thinking about making the shot. And a uh, bit of nerve. Just a little unsettled, perhaps, and we'll see if you, you could probably see it on their slide if they, uh, if they come out a bit dodgy. That would be the nerves uh, sh showing signs, but so far, so good. One peel down. Yeah, the countdown is on for Japan, trying to run China out of rocks. So one's already in the back, and they're trying to move a second Chinese stone out of play. And Yamaguchi has made two peels. So he's done his job in this end. Kosuke arguably had the easiest job. He just had to throw two through the house, but a much tougher task for his teammate, Tsuyoshi Yamaguchi. He makes two perfect peels, and Team Japan now very close to clinching their first ever gold medal at this event. Zhou Chang doing everything he can to keep China alive. Throwing another guard. This one's sliding deepish. Even if it stayed into the top 12 foot circle, though, the Chinese would consider it a guard that they could use. So two Chinese guards, and Shimizu now is going to be asked to play at the uh, left hand of the two stones as we're looking at it on our screen. Is this the moment for Team Japan? Three perfect clears from Yamaguchi, now Shimizu. Talked about the countdown. We can look behind the sheet. There are three yellow stones belonging to China. That means that there are four more to come, and one of them is already sitting there on the corner. So effectively, score four rocks with scoring potential left for the Chinese. And they need three of them to count to tie it up. Xu Xiaoming. This one I think is coming in the rings, definitely. Around the guard. We don't mind if it goes deep as long as it stays in. Nice stone there from Shu. Japan will ignore that and just try to rip that guard. Every Chinese stone that disappears is one step closer to victory for them. Well, he has missed, missed the peel earlier in the game, Shimizu. 
This sounds pretty good here. Yep, letter perfect here. Another step closer to that gold medal. Yeah, four Chinese stones now out of play. Three to come. But from the Japanese view, pretty happily, nowhere to hide, no guards. So China now is reduced to hoping that Japan misses open hits to stay in this game. No guards to use. Yeah. I love this close to the rings and maybe just off it because then they could split it. So they bring it tight, doing what they can. I think Tatsuro said, do you want to try the double? We just end it right now. Looks like from the broom placement, they might be having a crack and why not? The only thing that would be bad would be to miss everything. But as uh, Yasuki Morozumi climbs into the hack, if he was to make a double take out here, game over and Japan would be your champions. We've well, been waiting uh, a week. This guy's been waiting uh, nine years. Probably feels like a lifetime to him. Can he hold his nerve? Well, he's got two shots at it. Yeah. He doesn't need to make the double now, but like a golfer with a birdie putt to win the tournament that he doesn't really need to make. He'd love to end it like this. One. Oh, oh, and just oh. blows by the back one. Oh. So close to making that double and ending the tournament, but China still has the faintest of pulses. Look how close it was to making the double takeout. Still alive. Still alive. And you know, Hans, I, with all the crazy thing that's happened this week, <laughs> I, I don't feel perfectly certain. How's Japan's time clock? <laughs> <laughs> I think they're okay on. Okay, so they're not going to run out of time, so they can't lose the game that way. I haven't checked, but um, okay. I think they're okay. They've, they've played, what, five blank hands? Haven't called time out yet, <laughs> so that's pretty okay. Being serious now. China fighting to the last. Lu Rei is doing all that he can do, which is get another stone into the rings. <laughs> And this is the big difference between Japan stealing one in the last end and stealing two in the last end. All that Japan has to do now is eliminate one stone with an open hit, and they win this championship. Well, I can tell you that the boys are going to clean the ice. <laughs> so well you can eat off of it before this shot. Yeah, Do not want to pick up here. I yeah, don't want to leave anything to chance. So nah, nah. What's Lou Ray thinking? He'll be, I'm sure, replaying in his mind that final shot in the ninth end, that unbelievable turnaround. But that's gone now. You can't have it back. Final shot coming up now of end number 10. Gold medal match. Japan's Yusuke Morizumi with a hit to win the gold medal. Clean is always good, Hans. Clean is great. Right on the nose, and Japan at long last after six semifinals, six runner-ups, have finally become the Pacific Asia curling champions. Congratulations to Yosuke Morizumi, Tetsuro Shimizu, Sayoshi Yamaguchi, and Kosuke Morizumi. Team Japan are your 2016 Pacific Asia men's curling champions.
Confirmation on the final score. Japan runs China out of rocks, so make your final score. Japan five and China two. Highlights from the men's gold medal game at the Pacific Asia Curling Championships between China and Japan play on end number one. Difficult final shot here for China's Lu Ray, trying a raised double takeout, clips his own out of the button area, and it's a steal of one to Japan. Japan leading it 1 0 after the first end of play. Play on end number three. Japan's Yosuke Morozumi has a difficult shot. He's trying to nose that one on the button to score two. Hits it fractionally on the high side, rolls away, and China steals one. Players agree on the score, so after three ends of play, it was China two and Japan one. In the fourth end, Japan with the opportunity to be the first team to put a deuce on the board in this game. Yosuke Morozumi has to draw full 12 foot to get his second point. Stone comes into the rings and comes to rest in the back of the eight foot but comfortably inside the Chinese stones for a big score of two for Japan and their first lead of the game up three to two. And then the pivotal shot of the game in the ninth end. China's Liu Ray with a shot for two. Has to go a bit wide on the sheet, and this has been running a little bit straight inside out. Willing this stone to curl, but watch. Feathers the Japanese stone, and worse, clips his own stone at the back of the rings. So from a chance of scoring two, Lou Ray can only watch as the officials measure it. 
It's one for Japan, and the official confirms that's a steal of two. So after nine ends, Japan went out to a huge 5-2 to two lead. And then in the tenth and final end, open hit for the win for Yusuke Morizumi of Japan. Six-time runner-up at this championship. Will he finally get his gold medal? Yes, he does. Removes the Chinese stone. And relief and delight for Team Japan. Final score, Japan five, China three, and at long last, gold medals for Team Morizumi. So it's uh, taken you seven tries, but now you're finally Pacific Asia curling champion. What does it mean to you and your team? え、so we felt really good to win and I yesterday we, we we decided to go to the world and then now we can win. It, I'm feeling super happy. Now uh, when Lou Ray missed that shot in the tenth end to give you a steal of two, what were you thinking? Uh my しましたか uh, we are kind of lucky. Now, this, does this give you more energy and more confidence for the future with the World Championships and the Olympics to think about ahead? Uh, <laughs> ま、一つね、こう自信に、あ、自信に、ま、これからの自信にここで優勝できたことがなると思うんですけど、ま、それをこれをね、きっかけにまた今年の世界選手権でもいい結果残せるように頑張りたいと思います。So we couldn't win over China in the final. We've never uh defeat them, but now we could have win and I we are we now are Pacific Asia champion. This means a lot for like confidence, energy, and uh, we will keep keep more. All right, thank you very much and congratulations to you and your team. Thank you. So winners are grinners and uh, Japan's Yusuke Morizumi and his teammates, after so many runners-up, are now finally able to call themselves Pacific Asia curling champions. There we see the confirmation of the final line score in the men's gold medal game. It was Japan victors over China by a 5-3 to three score. So after a fantastic week of curling here in Uisong, Korea, we're going to be going into uh, one more interview before we close the action today. We're going to hear from um, the obviously disappointed Chinese skip, uh, Lu Ray. Well, you've won so many finals, Lu Ray. Uh, how does it feel now to have lost the final? It's the scale, it improved too much. All three teams are almost the same, same level. Now you've had a few years away from the game, you're coming back, and now you end up in the final. I'm sure you're happy with your performance this week. Uh, 
，虽然说拿了第二吧，但是我们付出了我们所需要的，付出了我们所有。Yeah, I'm very satisfied. My team is we work very hard together. Uh, even the new team, but we are still make a lot of big shot, make one of one game. Very very happy. Thank you very much and congrats. Thank you. Thank you. So grace and defeat there from Chinese skip Liu Ray. Uh, their consolation is they also qualify for the Men's World Curling Championships, but Japan are our champions this week in the men's event. So that will do it for us here from Wisong, Korea. We've had a terrific week here, and uh, we know that you've enjoyed it. So on behalf of my broadcast uh, colleague Sander Olvag and the entire production crew here in Wisong who've done an outstanding job, I'm Hans Fraunlob, thank you very much, and so long from Wiesong. はい、
あまり調子のいい試合っていうのが少なかったんですけど、昨日の準決勝、まず一番大事なところで一番いいパフォーマンスができて、今日はちょっと自分の中では満足いけなかったんですけど、まあ、勝つことができて、本当にあの最後まで戦い抜けてよかったと思います。はい、えー、これで世界選手権では、えー、今回はかなりいいプレーできたと思ってるんですけどさらに調子を上げて世界選手権で、えー、今年も4位以内に入りメダルを取ってオリンピックに向けてあの勢いをつけてプレーしていきたいと思います、えー、今シーズンの目標の一つでやっぱり世界選手権でメダルを取るでオリンピックでもやっぱメダル一番いいところを取りたいと思ってますので、えー、本当このま,じまずアジアで一番になれたってことが良かったのとこの勢いに乗って、えー、世界選手権で、えー、金目指して頑張りたいと思います。応援よろしくお願いします。はい、やっぱりここのアジアパシフィックゾーンから世界選手権の切符を取れたっていうことがまず一つ目標が達成できましたし、また来年の4月に世界選手権あるんですけど、ただオリンピックのポイントを取って帰ってくるんじゃなくて、去年のやっぱり4位という。結果よりも上を目指して戦っていきたいと思います。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございます。